And uh, tell him I'll call him later. I don't want to be disturbed now. Sorry I'm late, Kent. I was delayed in court. Good to see you. Thanks, Mr. Hudson. How's your father? Dad's all right. He mustn't, I mean, to know I'm here. Oh? You said you needed the advice of a lawyer. I do. Well, sit down. Tell me what's happened. Well, it's the neighborhood ball club. Mm -hmm. We've got a good diamond, but we've been wanting to build a backstop. Only we don't have any money. I see. Well, they're building this new store in our neighborhood, and, well, there's a lot of lumber lying around, and so... And so one dark night, you took what you needed. There were four of us. They don't know who took it yet, but they're raising an awful fuss. They usually do. But why all the fuss? All we took were a few boards. We need those boards, and they've got plenty more. Kent, take off your shoes. Huh? Let me have your shoes. Guess you know. Oh. You think maybe I left footprints or... I'll just keep them. My boy can use them. You have plenty more shoes. But that's different. How? Are laws made to regulate me and simply to protect you? Sometimes it seems laws are made just to keep us from we want to. On the contrary, Kent. It's law that allows us to live in freedom. Real freedom. Law is one of the cornerstones of our democracy. Kent, imagine what things would be like if we had no law. Suppose we had no constitution, nor any other written law. Then we would have no officers to enforce the law, and no courts to interpret the law. Now imagine a quiet evening at home with your mother, father, and sister. Maybe you're talking over plans for the weekend, when... something out of a Western movie. Yes. Such occurrences were common on the frontier. Then men banded together as vigilantes to preserve the peace. And finally came the formal establishment of law and order. So you see, Kent, every one of us should have a deep respect for the law because of where we'd be without it. You mean law makes the difference between freedom and between freedom and license. Kent, you said you played baseball. Sure, shortstop. Play according to the rules? Why, sure, I... I see what you're driving at. We all didn't follow the same rules. Couldn't have a very good game. You couldn't have a game at all. Yeah, that's right. But where do we get so many laws? Well, you know where you'll find the law Thou shalt not steal. Sure, in the Bible. Oh. That law is over 3,000 years old. Here are some laws. They're not yet one year old. Laws are the result of human experience, Kent. And they're wiser than any man. Take Socrates. When Socrates was condemned to death, his friends urged him to escape. But he refused on the grounds that the law said he must die. And he accepted the law as being right. So we should respect the law, because it represents the accumulated experience of men through the ages. Now here's another reason. Watch. What about it? It fell down. Naturally. Why does it fall down or toward the earth? 
Sir Isaac Newton, law of gravitation. My point is that an object falls to the earth, not because Newton passed a law, but because the universe is made that way. So, stealing is wrong, not because someone passed a law, but because peace and happiness are impossible unless our individual possessions are secured. We respect laws because law is in harmony with the universe itself. But what about gambling houses that run wide open? They're against the law. They exist when some people fail to respect the law. And where you find gambling wide open, you'll find other things. Open crime, corruption in government, robbery, peaceful citizens' lives in danger. All stemming from a lack of respect for law. Is that what you want? Why, no. So we're all a lot better off respecting the law. You mean, because without respect for law, law can't operate. Without respect for law, a man can't get a store built. Now, wait a minute. You can't class me with a bunch of gamblers. It's only a matter of... The issue, Kent, is not a few dollars worth of lumber. It's your attitude toward law itself. Let me tell you about a case that was in court about a month ago. The defendant was a young fellow, not much older than you. The story is, unfortunately, a rather common one. In his cross-examination, the prosecuting attorney brought out the whole story. It began with a card tray on a hall table at home. That's where his mother kept loose change. He was eight years old. His mother was a busy woman. She wouldn't miss a couple of pennies. No, mother didn't miss the pennies. So he began taking more money. And it became a habit, until that's what usually happens. You're caught. But not long after, he was driving with his mother, where the posted speed limit was 35 miles per hour. She was doing 50. And she had punished him for breaking the law. Then, suddenly, what made her slow down? So the little boy learned from his mother that you must obey the law, if there's someone around to enforce it. By the time he'd entered high school, he'd lost all respect for the law. He was a bright boy, but it was easy to cheat. And for him, it was the natural thing to do. And after all, hadn't he heard his father gloat over cheating on his income tax return? So you see how disrespect for law can become a habit? How the parent's example may be followed by the child? Later, he stole a wristwatch and probably showed it to his cronies. Other boys he was infecting with his own disrespect for law. One of these same boys was with him a couple of years later when he made his biggest and most dramatic show of flaunting the law. Yes, it was his biggest show. It was also his last. The law which this young man held in such low regard, the law assured him a fair trial. But still, the law did punish him. He has time now to think about what he's done. And I believe he'll turn out all right. He realizes that his trouble began with two pennies stolen from a car tray. The money wasn't important, not to him nor to his parents. What's important is that from that petty beginning, he developed an attitude of disrespect for law, for all law. And that attitude has come near to ruining his life. So you see, Kent, you should respect the law, if for no other reason, than to keep yourself out of trouble. You mean that, that my taking a few boards could, could lead to something like that? Couldn't it? Yeah, I guess it could, but... But, mister... Laws aren't just a matter of policemen and jails, Kent. 
We need them only as people disrespect the law. The amazing thing is the small amount of enforcement that is necessary. That's the real proof of the rightness of law. That's why I decided to become a lawyer, to help people understand the law, to help promote respect for law. Kent, would you like to help? Me? Yes. Can I? Of course you can. How's this? You get together with these other boys that were in with you on this lumber affair. Mr. Hudson says that if we chip in and make good on the lumber, he's sure the contractor won't make any formal charge against us. How about it, fellas? It's okay with me. Well, all right. Hey, wait a minute. Nobody knows who took the lumber. Why pay for it? After all, if we just keep quiet for a while, unless you're going to snitch on us, how about it? Well, I wouldn't want to snitch on any of my friends. It'd be better just to straighten it out. As Mr. Hudson explained it, well, if I saw a man breaking into a store, it would be my duty to report it to the police, wouldn't it? Hey, are you calling me a thief? Because if you are, I'm going to smash you right in the... Sure he is. He's calling himself a thief, too, and he's right. We're all the same. Thanks for the pen, Joey. I sure can use it. Hey, give me that. That's my pen. Why, Joey, are you calling me a thief? <laughs> Hello? Can I speak with Mr. Hudson, please? You get the idea, Joey. A law is a law. You don't draw the line. You just live up to it. Here's the pen. Hello, Mr. Hudson. This is Kent Lawrence. Yeah, the boys are here, and they decided to chip in and pay for the lumber. Yep, all of them. What's that? Just a minute. Mr. Hudson says he's already talked to the man who's building the store. If we show up Saturday at 7.30, he'll let us work out the cost of the lumber, seeing as we want to do it on our own. Well, yeah, that's well. Mr. Hudson, we'll be there. Oh, that's good. And Kent, tell the fellow something for me, will you? Tell them they'll be better off as individuals, and the community will be better off for having them in it. If they will practice respect for law. By knowing the law, by obeying the law, whether there's a policeman around or not, by helping with law enforcement, and by encouraging others to respect the law. Oh, you said you needed the advice of a lawyer. I do. Well, sit down. Tell me what's happened. Well, it's the neighborhood ball club. Mm -hmm. We've got a good diamond, but we've been wanting to build a backstop. Only we don't have any money. I see. Well, they're building this new store in our neighborhood, and, well, there's a lot of lumber lying around, and so... And so one dark night, you took what you needed. There were four of us. They don't know who took it yet, but they're raising an awful fuss. They usually do. But why all the fuss? All we took were a few boards. We need those boards, and they've got plenty more. Kent, take a laws are made just to keep us from we want to. On the contrary, Kent. It's law that allows us to live in freedom. Real freedom. Law is one of the cornerstones of our democracy. Kent, imagine what things would be like if we had no law. Suppose we had no constitution, nor any other written law. And uh, tell him I'll call him later. I don't want to be disturbed now. Sorry I'm late, Kent. I was delayed in court. Good to see you. Thanks, Mr. Hudson. How's your father? Dad's all right. He mustn't, I mean, to know I'm here. Off your shoes. Huh? Let me have your shoes. Guess you know. Oh, you think maybe I left footprints or... I'll just keep them. My boy can use them. You have plenty more shoes. But that's different. How? Are laws made to regulate me?
and simply to protect you sometimes it seems